happy to welcome you tonight for our live event with Avi uh, Appelstein. And my name is Isabel from the Arrows and Archives. And my colleague Charlotte is also here to um, talk to you in the chat. So if you have any questions today, please just post them in the chat. Charlotte will collect them and give them to me later on after Avi's talk. And uh, just a quick organizational information until uh, Avi will start his presentation. Uh, he will talk about one hour, I guess, and then we'll have like 30 minutes time for your questions. So just feel free to write them inside the chat and we will come back to that later. If you have any other questions, just uh, ask Charlotte. She will be happy to, to answer you. And um, so Avi, now it's your stage. <laughs> okay, thank you, Isabel and Charlotte. Well, I will try to keep it in one hour. I'm not sure that I can. Uh, maybe I will get over a bit. Uh, I have a lot of photos in the presentation and I won't give so much time for the photos. I will talk during the, the presentation and uh, tell what, what they meant for me or what they are mean, uh, these photos. And I think I can uh, start. I just will uh, mention I'm writing a book about uh, actually the presentation is a, is a follow up for for a book that I'm trying to write that I'm a long time in, in that and uh, it's a result the reason that I'm doing it all that I'm writing the book and I'm making also this presentation is because I think the awareness I'm living in Germany and the awareness to the, here it's only two numbers people know about numbers but mainly that's it they don't know anything else uh, they close themselves also to, uh, to something else because it's not easy uh, to deal up with that and for sure not for Germans. And uh, I will come in the, in the presentation, I will come to this topic uh, again. So I will share my screen now. So... What you are seeing now is actually a picture of my grandmother. The question, of course, how comes that my grandmother, that the picture of my grandmother is in our possession? Uh, well, the story is very simple. It's with somebody who emigrated to Israel before the war, a relative of my mother, it's the mother of my mother, had uh, some photos. And uh, from there, my mother could get it. This is the photo of my grandfather from my father's side. And it's also the question, how come does one have such a photo? Uh, I will tell you later about it. I just will give some remarks about it uh, now when I go to the next slide. This, this photo of my grandmother is, came from this one. Can you see the mouth that I'm that I'm uh, moving, Isabel? Yes, yes, we can yeah, see. Is it. it okay? So that's the person here, in the middle. That's with her family, which I don't know uh, about them anything. I don't I don't remember simply what my mother told about them. Uh, they it have to be some kind of uh, of uh, sisters and brothers or something like that, and children of of her uh, family. But I just don't have any information. On the back, there is a lot of written with tight Polish. I will send it to friends to try to, um, uh, to translate it for me. But that's the source of this, pic of this photo. That's the, what I meant with the written behind it, in the back of the photo. This photo was taken from this picture. This is a, a piece of a, a newspaper. It's from a newspaper that was published sometimes in the 50s or the begin or the, or the 60s, I think. Uh, and I will tell more about this picture because it's something to do with what will come later on. That was the reproduction that was in the Iskor book for the city of my father. I just will come back, sorry, to these two pictures, this one and this one, because it's very, very important. These photos were in the bedroom of my, of my parents. 
and I can say that it's like a, a, a it was a kind of a confronting every day the Holocaust with that. For us as children, we always saw it. For them, it was the memory, and for us, it was an atmosphere. And the atmosphere was very, very uh, difficult as children. Anyway, as I I recall it like that. Uh, the atmosphere was like that, that I have a father who dealt with the Holocaust quite good, quite good, that means he could talk about it. And I had a mother who hardly uh, said anything. She told me things when I asked her directly. And except certain events that she always repeat about them. And to them I will come, I will come later. It is like that, that my father started telling me, I actually asked him, uh, and I'm not sure if he started from his, by himself or, or I asked him. He told me stories since I was 12 or so. Once a week, I think it was Thursday, after a, a detective story in the radio, a radio sketch, uh, that it, it's called Paul Temple, maybe some of you know them. After that, when it was finished, my father was sitting with me and telling stories uh, from his experience in the concentration camp. And of course, I'm very, very, very sorry that I don't have any uh, recording of that. I have to trust my memory about it. When I asked him sometimes about uh, his experience in, in, with his parents, about his youth, he started always crying. He just couldn't, he just couldn't bear the memory. That's the memory that he couldn't take, the, the, the loss of what he, he couldn't take. The memories of the from the concentration camps were sometimes like uh, yeah, hero stories. That's one that was my experience with that. Now we are talking about Poland, uh, Poland, and the places where all of this take place is this where you see the uh, Star of David. That's the place for my mother. It's called uh, uh, Suhedniov. It's very close to Kielce. Kielce is the place where in 1946, where these uh, riots against Jews and uh, actually brought to that that most Jews who came back to Poland left Poland again. And that's Abby, another place. Sorry, one second. Sorry for interrupting you. Yes, Could you maybe yes. also make the picture a little bit bigger? Because it's it's okay. hard to... Yeah, that's, that's a lot okay. better. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, as I said, it was close to Kielce. It's called Suhedniov, a small place, very small, uh, small town. And that was Olkus. Olkus was located a very, very convenient place. I will come to that also. The family of my mother uh, lived in Suhedniov and in Bozentin. They are very, very close, about uh, 10 kilometers from each other. And uh, part of the family of her parents, her grandparents, were here in, Bo in Bozentin. Her parents were born like that, and they lived in Suhedniov. That's the, thought, the map of Suhedniov. I don't know if they had this lake at that time. Now they have it. It's a very nice place. I've been there several times, and my mother was living on this street here, where I'm putting my the hand. This family, as I said, none of them survived. That was her, her mother, as I said. A photo of her father I don't have, but in this collection that this uh, uh, relative of her had, she had a, a photo of her, the brother of her father. So that's her uncle, uh, Wolf. And the, the nice woman here is Rivka Lea. They were married. They were, I think he was 25, she was 22 or something like that. They also didn't survive the Holocaust. That's the birth certificate of, of the sister of my uh, mother, called Hannah. And here is the date, it's 1930. And therefore, and you will understand later why it was very important for me, I didn't find, I didn't get the birth certificate of my mother. But I know that her uh, sister was two years younger than her. 
That's my mother from an old, probably from the same collection. And it's unbelievable. That's why with my brothers, we argue if it is like that or not, but I'm, I'm quite sure it is like that. She is here when she is 14. She looked much more, much older than, uh, than she was. And that's part of the reason why she survived. And I don't know if, uh, if you can see here, they had, they had braids. I don't know how you call it in German, Sopfe. Braids. Uh, and that's for me one. She never had it uh, later on. She had a long, long hair and a braided pigtail. And the schoolmates always said, oh, Manja, that's her, her name in Polish. Oh, Manja, you are so beautiful, but just pity that you are Jewish. That's what she told me. That's the house where she lived. I took these photos in 1997, I think. And uh, in this story, this place, I want to, to say something where from my mother started the Holocaust. The Holocaust started already in 39, of course, in September. But for her, I don't know which year it was, uh, came a group of German. They forced the parents to go out of the house out of and uh, forced her to come back into the house. There went three Germans with her and they were, uh, they were uh, sexually misused her. Now I asked her in one time that I dared to ask her if she was raped and she uh, said, no, no, no. My parents also asked me, no, no, they did nothing. It was just like uh, by the gyneco gynecologist. We're talking about 14 years old. Uh, so I don't know what happened to her. That's the thing that she told me again and again. When I asked her about experience that was more effective on her, lifelong, as anything else. But there was still a lot to come. This place or up, this is Skarzysko Kamiena. And from Suchedniov is about 10 kilometers. And in 1942, probably in June, she was taken from home and brought to there. Skarzysko Kamiena was a, 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 work, a, a working place of Hasag. Hasag is the Hugo Schneider uh, Gesellschaft. So it's sh shareholding of Hugo Schneider. We'll go back to that. And uh, it was a very big factory. And what they produce is ammunition. And uh, the first thing that she, what happened when she came to, the, uh, to this concentration camp, and that's the other scene that she told me only once. First, the hair was cut off totally. That was for her, her first shock there. And secondly, her mother gave her for the way a pillow. And this pillow was uh, stolen in the first night. So she had actually nothing, no relatives, no hope. And from time to time, I will put also the stuff that were working there. These are Germans, it's from, uh, from earlier time, it's from 1940. When they are there, they are quite proud of what they are doing. You see, they play here with a accordion so on they had in certain way good life there are many holocaust photos where the staff of concentration camp celebrates in hasag there were three uh, three camps actually this this is the small small one verk b it's the second the second one they produce a certain kind of ammunition that's the building that's the only uh, the only building where hasag b was the rest were two others. That's by the way I put it because to show that uh, this factory was be already before Polish for metal. That's a photo that I took uh, also in '97 or later. Uh, they took it. Uh, they took it over, and when the German were went away, the Poles took took it again over and make their own factory for other things there. Some of the buildings left as they were. And in such a building, my mother was. That's a hall. It's a working hall. That's 
kind of a factory. Here they produce different kind of, of ammunition. That's another picture from that. And they who work here are lucky. My mother was in, uh, in Lager A, in Camp uh, A. In Camp A, uh, you had actually the lightest, uh, the lightest job, the lightest uh, things to do. Her job was there to look. There was a long, long table with a mirror and all the production of uh, uh, ammunition was rolling there and she had to see that there is no ditch or anything like that, anything that can block the, the rifles then. And I asked her at one time, tell me, did you sabotage or anything? She, she looked at me as I'm not, I'm not coming from this world uh, because uh, you could be easily, at the moment that you were, did anything wrong, you will send to Camp C. And Camp C was a place where they uh, had to mix to to uh, to mix the different ingredients to create it, to create TNT. There was a, a, a material that caused pectin, and the contact with this that you had you by mixing it you get always it to the lungs. And the the, the results of that was that uh, people after three weeks died just from working there. So it was a, was a, a safe uh, going to uh, to death with this uh, with this work. And anyway, I understood when I asked her that I don't really I really don't understand what what's going on in a concentration camp as much as I know. And uh, she said, she told me about one person. And I will try to now I will go and I will short a bit. Uh, his name was Krause. He was thinking, and he was a veteran from another from the war, and he had a, a, a stock a stick. And whenever he thought that you are too slow or whatever, he didn't like you, you got a hit from him. So that was the daily life. Daily, daily life was 12 hours uh, uh, shift, and the shift could be in night or day. This is not what my mother had because she couldn't leave the camp, but this for people who were working there, there were Poles who could work there, and they had something like that, that that's, was, uh, they, they, that's uh, evident that they can work in the night, uh, in the night shift. Skarzysko and uh, Suhedniv, there are only 10 kilometers, as I told you, and uh, many, several Poles who were, uh, who were living in Suhedniv came there to work. They had this kind of, of uh, paper, they can uh, that they can uh, get out of the register of the area where which is limited and that's another thing that they have i don't know this person but this is from the same work where my uh, the same uh, camp where my mother was and there was a, a pair a couple who was in uh, in suhedniv who lived in Suhedniov, and they uh, brought always news to my mother. They knew them, they knew the family, and they brought news. And uh, and from time to time, they brought they brought her something to eat. They, her name, their name was Sharanitz. It's important for me to say things like that because uh, I think that these people are uh, always are worth to be mentioned. And one day they came with the message. It was the 21st of September, uh, 1942, uh, that all Jews were transported. It was the eve of Yom Kippur, or Yom Kippur, I'm not sure. And where they were transported was to here. You can see it's 250 kilometers with the train. It could be, but take a day long. That's the transport list, or the, tra the, trans the train list, actually. Probably with this one, could be that there were extra. If you look at these uh, trains, it was to Treblinka. They uh, go from one station back, and when they're uh, there, after three hours, they turn back, they go empty to the, to the other station. From there, they go again, and going again, to the, going after two hours, back to the other station. That's not a place that one wants to be. I won't start to tell them. I see that I will go. It won't get me that with the time uh, good enough. So uh, Treblinka is a horror. Most people 
you, sometimes a third of the of the wagons were already dead when they came there because in the in the summertime it was so hot in these uh, wagons that they couldn't they just couldn't breed if you think it was yom kippur they didn't eat also in that day so they didn't know that they will be transported so uh, but anyway the ones who came there went through the so-called himmelstrasse the way to heaven these are the gas chambers here were all the uh, rest uh, uh, with about two, three hundred other prisoners uh, were, were, were totally destroyed and buried and so on. I want to stay in, uh, now in this place. Uh, I put this person because he was the deputy. Uh, he was actually a cook, an SS uh, cook, who came somewhere because he was so cruel that he could become the deputy of the of the commander. He used to have a dog that you uh, that he called him human being, and every time he sent his his, bo his every day actually he sent his dog on prisoners, and he said uh, human being beat the beat the the dog. Uh, I won't stay long about that. He was uh, caught in 1959. Was sentenced to death. Uh, was sentenced to uh, uh, to lifelong. Was sitting 20 years uh, in in uh, in prison. The last five years he was free because he was uh, very sick. And uh, it was actually more a Selden case that somebody paid for what he did. I just want to. This is one photo from his album. This person made an album that called Great Times. And that was a, when he was arrested, he was founded, found with this album. It is place was found this album. This is the commander, uh, Franz Stangl. He tried, and that's another story, and there I will leave this place. Uh, he was escaped through, with the help of the Vatican to Syria and from Syria to Brazil. And actually he was arrested in, I think, 67 or something like that. He uh, was tried in Germany in 1970 and uh, died in 1971 in prison. He, they helped him also to bring his wife and children to Brazil. So that's something in the attitude uh, that was in Germany uh, that uh, very, very, very difficult to digest. Of course, I didn't know it as a child. That is, he is in arrest uh, at that time. And that's what stays from Terrinica today. And that's the place where all Suhedni of Bodzentin, that's in Yad Vashem, a memorial for them. I go back. My mother uh, lived as Karzisko Kamiena and go, I don't know how, probably with a train. It's probably August uh, 44 because the uh, Russians, because the, it's too risky for them to stay there, for the Germans, not for the Jews. They bring them to Czestochowa. It's a very similar, it's the same aim. They, they have also, it's also a Hasak, uh, a Hasak factory. They are called also High Hasak Juden, the Jews of Hasak. And that's the where the camp is. And that's the most interesting uh, things. I found it to first in, in the Warsaw Archiv. That's her registration card. And what's interesting for me is her date of birth. The month is correct, but she is four years older than she is. And as I said, she was born in 28. She looked much older. So she could put and I'm not sure that she. I asked her once if she uh, if she uh, if she told something like that she she said of course not. I don't. I never lied to them. I, it's either she did it instinctively or somebody who registered her uh, thought that knew already that what can save her. So he wrote 1924. Uh, she's working in in certain ammunition. Uh, factory there or, or, or company, not company, a group, the group. The, and that's again where they were in Częstochowa. That's how this looks like. And that's indeed originally a photo from there. 
And in January 45, she uh, get out from Częstochowa because the Russians are getting close and travel this long way of 870 kilometer, or maybe they took this road that they're through Lodge, I'm not sure, I don't know, to Bergen-Belsen. And my mother said, if there is a hell, that's Bergen-Belsen. Uh, I guess all, all of you know, most of you know, that's where Anna Frank, for example, died and many, many other people. When she came there, it was so desolated. There were so many people that they didn't have at all where to stay. They were staying on the field. They just stayed outside. She said they hardly got any food. Uh, they were, they were, it was, uh, as she said, the hell, the, the hell uh, on earth, just to be there, just to be there. And uh, that's another, that's from the day that the, the liberation, and that's, it must have been already a half a year before, or four months before. And that's, again, the people who were running this uh, camp, that was, they were tried, most of them, uh, by, by the uh, British not by the German. From Ber Bergen-Belsen, she moved uh, out on, fourth, uh, on uh, the 4th of, of March, 1945. Uh, they were moved out only six, uh, 600 kilometers from north of Germany to south of Germany to a place that's called Burgau. And in Burgau, it's looked, uh, it looks very, very nice, but uh, it wasn't so nice, but it wasn't so hard as before. She came to the restriction of, uh, of Dachau, and that's her uh, uh, registration card in, uh, from Dachau. She came there on uh, 5th of, Ma of March. Uh, so, Khadnyov again, uh, uh, 1924. That's the registration card of uh, of her and i show it because i don't even know why i show it doesn't matter uh, it says it just said that she came here from bergen belsen and so on that's what was there produced there uh, uh, this uh, air, aircraft and the m ma uh, 2262 that's originally from there. It was found by the Americans still there. Also that one. And at uh, April 45, the Americans come, came closer and closer. And they moved around 60 kilometers, I don't know how, from Burgau to a place that's called Turkheim. That's belong also to Dachau. And that's how it looks like. Because of the lack of time, I won't stay here long. long. The, it was really, uh, they call it Erdhuten, uh, the earth, earth uh, hats. Uh, it was a typical way to, uh, to have it in, uh, in Dachau subcamps. Not all of them, but some of them. That's the commander, we leave it by now. From Turkheim, they had to leave, probably they stayed only uh, a week or even less than a week. They had to walk, that was the called one of the first death mar march because they started quite early. They had to walk this uh, 70 kilometer to a place that's called München Allach. And in München Allach, uh, I don't think that she, it was also a production uh, place. I don't think that, that she got it all to work there because that was this uh, kind of death march. There were 60, uh, 60 women that died on the way, that I know from the information. That's again, were photos that were taken uh, secretly most of the time. This is Allah. It's called, it's uh, a factory of BMW. So if you uh, BMW, you know what they have also there as a story. That's the camp, doesn't matter now. That's the work there. And that's the liberation in Allah, originally in Allah. So you can see here, happy, happy, happy people. Uh, don't, really don't believe that it came of them, that they succeed to, uh, especially this person here who waves his, his hand. And these people, they just see, you, they, I, think, I don't think that we can imagine what a relief 
is something like that. Uh, you know that more, a lot of people died also after that because of uh, of uh, food. Uh, they take, uh, took too much food on them. So that's I took it. There is a resemble photo. It's also from Allah. It's also from uh, from uh, from the same place. From Munich, Allah. My mother was taken away to a place that called Feldafing. That's a DP camp. Uh, and I will come to that later. That's a registration. I think it was made much later, but that's the registration. It says already even where she lived there in Feldafing. And that's in power, in power uh, sentences, actually the whole story of my mother. It's a registration. She was there registered as a child because she was, uh, in, uh, she was born in 1928. And the, we are talking about uh, she was 17 then. She was registered as a child. And you have your, uh, a summary of that. Went to Czestochowa, Skarżysko, Czestochowa, Bergel Zelme, Turkheim. Here it says that she would have been there two, uh, eight weeks. I think they mixed there because she was in Burgau eight weeks and uh, came to uh, Feldafing, and that's it. I go back now to the story of my father. I have to hurry up, I think, but it's okay. Uh, you know, he, uh, where he lived, it was a good place in the middle, Polkush. It wasn't a very small town, but it was a town. It was a, a central town for all the uh, small places around. Uh, it was between Katowice and Krakow. Sosnovich is important. And uh, my grandfather was born in Benjin. And in... Uh, and uh, my father stayed a lot of times by his grandfather in Benjin and by a person that will come later just for a short time uh, also too. That's the picture of uh, the photo of, of uh, the map of uh, Olkush. Not big, not very small, very nice. I visited many, many times. I love it there. Here we have a, a small river that today is uh, get only when it's really raining, otherwise it's dry. And every city, in every respectable city anyway in uh, Poland, have a place that's called Rynek. Rynek is the marketplace, but it's actually it's the center. And uh, of course, Olkosz had also a Jewish community. At some, play, at some times in the history, it was already uh, it was even forty percent of the of the inhabitants there. And there, are, so of course there is poverty and there is also richness. There is everything there. And that was the uh, rabbi, not the director. It was the rabbi of the the Hasidic uh, group, uh, uh, Rabbi Her uh, Horowitz. And that's again his photo was very respectable, very known. And of course, a respectable place like Olkush have also a synagogue. Actually, every town had a synagogue where Jews were. And that was the picture of the of this synagogue. Unfortunately, there was all there were also Germans there. Uh, I, I think September, I don't know when exactly they came to Benjin. I think they came on, on 6th of September here. They came maybe a bit later. This place was the so-called so uh, Rathaus or uh, uh, mayor place, or I don't know how you call it in English. Uh, and that's the actually what where the city was run, and they changed it from uh, to a Deutsches house, so a German house. This action took place in this in this Rinek, where where I just said before took place on the 31st of July, 1940. It's called the Bloody Mid uh, Wednesday. And uh, all people over 15, uh, all men over 15 were collected from the from very, very early in the morning. I won't show, I will show some pictures, not all of them, uh, were collected, uh, were forced to lie like that the whole day long. Uh, were registered, were, and I will show you later, were tortured. And uh, this action took here in, this, in the so-called in the Rinek. By the way, it was not only Jews, it was Poles and Jews. 
and everybody over 15. The reason for this action was that two weeks before, there was a German policeman murdered, probably by ro uh, robbers. Uh, and uh, the Germans didn't keep, keep up with that and uh, made this action. This is another place where they make this, uh, uh, this action, the same, same style, as you see, they register the people and I don't know if you see it good like that. And that's again in the Rinek. In this case, is the Jews. How you recognize that they are Jews? They have. They didn't have a Star of David in uh, in this uh, part of uh, of uh, of Germany. They, they, it's, it's called the whole area called Zaglembia. They had uh, a, a band, uh, a white band with a uh, with a David with uh, a Star of David uh, on the arms. So in this case, they are Jews. But as I said, everybody was collected there. This is again the Rinnick. This is where the synagogue, the red, the small red, that's where the synagogue that I showed before. And in this Rinnick, this person was, uh, became uh, the favorite for, uh, for the Germans. Uh, he was uh, took from his home uh, in the morning, it was very early in the morning, five, five, uh, five in the morning or something like that. As my uh, the uncle of my father wrote in his testimony, very early in the morning, they, uh, he was in pray. I don't know, it could be his son or his son-in-law, the person next to him, but these two will suffer a lot. If you see anybody who knows something about Judaism, this is the praying, uh, this is Tfilim, I don't know how you call it uh, in, in English. Uh, anyway, he was in the middle of the prey with the talit. They took him, and that's one of the most iconic pictures of the Holocaust. I will come to that in the end of, of this uh, thing. I won't stay here long about it, but you can see they split it out. That's a disgrace for Jews. The people you see here next to them are uh, lying, part of this... Uh, and, and not to ignore, of course, the smiling, enjoying Germans. That's again how this disgraced. And as I said, they, were, they became their object for the whole day. Uh, again, we see this smiling German on the right side. And other enjoying Germans and they are already really, uh, they are frightened, they are, uh, they are suffering for sure. And this person on the left, I presume, that's the, that's the one that will be in the, on the next uh, picture, this person on the left, take them with him and bring them to the small river. And he forced them, he really uh, abused them like that. And why I'm, I'm showing that? Not I, I don't want to show them in their uh, in their in this situation. I want to show the cruelty of Germans, because it's nothing after they killed, they tortured, they deceived people, they uh, they became rich, they did everything, uh, and that's as far that it went. He's not dying. He forced him to. It's not that he's dying here. He's going. He's getting out uh, from that uh, from this situation. And I think that was the that is the person that was there before. Uh, on the left and the other picture. We find ourselves from the Rinek, they took him probably here. It's not, it's about 500 meters to this place that it's called uh, uh, the Black Hill. This place, and that's where the river uh, was. And just next to it was this picture. It was taken, I don't know if in the same time, in the same day. That's for sure. This picture was taken. And uh, you can recognize again, this is my grandfather. And, uh, sorry. His beard, wait, I just have to take some water, sorry. It's okay. Is beard being cut off? If that will be the end of the Holocaust, so okay, 
we can live with that. If this day on the on the 31st of uh, of July 1940 will be the end of the Holocaust, okay. Uh, but that was only the start. Anyway, his beard is cut off. Is cut off. Uh, he was forced, if you saw before, Germans to uh, that am amuse themselves. Here you can see Jews that are either frightened or they hate the furious. If you see the person in the in the right side here, he's just furious. And this uh, uh, person, Zil Zilberstein, I think, or Zilberstein, I'm not sure his, his name right now, I don't, I don't recall, uh, is forced to do it. All of them are working in the meat industry. What is the meat industry? My grandfather had uh, was a, a, a kosher a butcher, butcher. It's called shochet in Hebrew. So he was uh, he was the one who actually make the ritual uh, killing of of. Uh, of the animals that we eat, which we all eat at that time. That's the ritual in, in Judaism. It's a lecture by itself. We leave it by by, by side. All of them are in this uh, person. He was the the shochet, the, the, and he was beside that a mohel. Mohel bedoited. He was the one who were circumcised, circumcises the the small uh, the, the little youngs, the, the little uh, babies. Again, the tradition in. Uh, in Judaism, and his, what my father told me, he was also Dayan. Dayan is a uh, ritual uh, ritual judge. Uh, anyway, he's on the payroll of the of the community for his job as a shochet, as a as a ritual uh, slaughter. Every uh, a community in in a religious community cannot exist without that, without uh, without having a, a ritual. Uh, 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 a ritual butcher uh, who take care that that it's happened according to the kosher to the kosher ways. My father probably liked Germans very much because that's the, the his signature on the birth certificate of my uh, of my father. And if you can read German, he doesn't write Appelstein at his as his name. He write Apfelstein. Which means apple stone. Yeah? So, and he changed his name, or I don't know if he changed it officially. He didn't change it officially, but that's the way that he adopted to to write it in the German way. He acquainted probably also Germans in Benjamin because he was grew up there and he knew them. But uh, he was found with the Germans. That's the. My father then didn't have a graveyard, of course, because he died. I will show you later. Uh, that's the graveyard of, of his father-in-law. He was also a shochet, also a ritual slaughter. He was very educated. Otherwise, he wouldn't have these six book, books. That, that's the six books of the Mishnah. And that's the knife of that one uh, make the circumcision. And that's the situation of the cemetery in Olkush. Uh, I won't keep uh, now it's in better uh, shape if it if it's better it's another question uh, that's the the graveyard the, the gravestone of my uh, grand grandfather grand grandfather yeah and uh, Jakob Kalikstein I'm jumping 19 uh, September 1941 uh, the Germans decided that will, there will be a ghetto. It was an open ghetto, so uh, not, not with uh, not with a fence or anything like that, may, but uh, with guards on uh, different places. And that was the, the they had to move from where they lived. If you have uh, luck, you were in the place where the, the ghetto was, and if not, you have to move. The Poles that were living in the area of the ghetto had to also to leave their place. So uh, they made a, an exchange that nobody was happy about it, but they had to. That was the area of the ghetto. If you see here, uh, it's quite, uh, it's not very big, but here my father was living on this street here before, so he had to move. He had to move uh, there. Here is the Rinek. So I come to my father, 
before uh, he was uh, kidnapped in the ghetto on the street on the 13th of April 1942. He never saw his parents anymore. He was uh, kidnapped in the street and was taken to uh, to working camp in place that called Niederkir or Dolna in, in Polish. Maybe he was taken first to Sosnovich and then from there, uh, because the, there is a group that was taken to Sosnovich in that day. But anyway, he traveled to Dolnau, he traveled, he was taken to Dolnau. And uh, this is the registration of his whole family. Uh, these actually, these people, he, as I said, he, de he never saw anybody uh, anymore. Again, that's for the, from the book, uh, from the, uh, so I will, I will see, I have to run with the time. I don't know if I will succeed it. Uh, this is a, a photo of the of the gathering in between the 10th of and the 15th of uh, of june that means two months later uh, all the jews of uh, of uh, Olkush were collected there were about three thousand all of them were collected and that were that the, they were sent uh, to auschwitz uh, that's you see some of these convoys i won't stay on that but uh, it's uh, it's enough to look at it to understand what's what happens here. Here they are in the train station, and they are taken in and were sent here. Most probably, this is the area uh, photo of Auschwitz. They were taken to this here red. There were two at that time. There were uh, there weren't this uh, uh, crematorium, not not yet. They were taken to the so-called Red House. It was the first crematorium in in uh, in uh, Auschwitz in Birkenau. They were taken first to the train. There were also no uh, trains that came uh, right into Birkenau. It was built more uh, later in '44. So they were taken here, and uh, they had to undress uh, just side uh, outside, and were pushed into gas chambers and were all murdered. The only thing that left from this community is this sign. That's where the uh, the synagogue stood, and this stone in Yad Vashem, and this picture, that is iconic. It's one of the most imp most uh, most known pictures from the Holocaust. Not everybody put it uh, with Olkush, and it's really uh, iconic because you have the whole uh, parts of the Holocaust, or not the whole, but very very uh, important parts of the, what was the Holocaust. And indeed, you have this enjoying, smiling Germans. And this uh, suffering person, which I find him very humble, uh, and uh, by the way, he was a teacher, and most probably my father uh, were learning the, the first uh, letters uh, with him, by him. He was a teacher. Something. It, If anybody were in the night, Avi, can you hear me? Because we have problems um, hearing you at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, Avi's connection is gone at the moment. We will just wait a little bit and he will come back. Thank you everyone for your patience. And uh, as we said before, um, Charlotte will collect all your questions and we will give them to Avi after um, he has finished his talk. So we'll just wait a minute until he's back. 
By the way, I'm happy to see that our uh, speakers who had presentations here before, uh, Mendel and Abe, uh, are here. So welcome back. Very good to see that you're here as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Valeska, for your for your message. That's very good to read as well. I started collecting quite a few questions already. Thank you so much for participating in this way as well. And um, I posted the link to our inquiry page because I see that there are many um, second or third generation um, people uh, joining us tonight. Uh, if you haven't uh, researched the URLs and archives, there are two options, of course. There's the online archive. Um, I will send the link to that shortly as well into the post, uh, into the chat. And then there is the option to um, make an official inquiry. Um, so our colleagues from the tracing department will look through all of our um, collection for any leads to um, the names that you will give um, us to, to research. So, so this is always um, an option. Um, and we are very happy um, to answer um, all the inquiries that, that you are making. Um, uh, yes, also this is some good news from the tracing department. Um, a few years ago, the list um, of the inquiries was very long and it took us quite a while to answer those uh, inquiries. Uh, we're down to a few weeks now, so um, you don't have to wait uh, for an answer from the URLs and archives anymore. Uh, not not as long anymore um, as you might did back in the 90s or 2000s. So. And what we can also maybe say is that not all names are or can be found yet in the online archive. So it's always also good to just send us an inquiry because there you might be able to get more documents than you can find in the online archive. But we're working on it. Um, so, yeah, that hopefully everything will be online soon as well. Uh, there's one question about um, the recording in the chat, um, whether the questions can also be seen. I mean, the questions will, of course, be um, part of the recording as well, in the sense that um, we will be giving them to um, Avi um, after the talk, but um, after his presentation. But I'm not sure if the chat is part of the recording. Isabel, do you know that? No, it, it's not. You cannot see it later on in the recording. Um, I will just log into my email to see if Avi is saying anything because at the moment he uh, seems to have problems with his connection. Just give me a minute. Um, yeah, so the recording of um, this session will be sent out via our webinar tool um, after we finish um, the session, so you will magically through the tech technical world receive the recording anyway. So um, no link is necessary for that. So you will receive um, uh, the recording via the email address you have registered with tonight. I haven't had any messages yet by him. I think he's fighting with technical <laughs> issues at the moment. So. Um, I think it's okay if we wait a few more minutes and if it's, if it's not working, then I'm sure we'll find another day to, to finish his talk. So it would be good if you have a little bit more time to see if he can come back. Um, and while we're waiting, um, maybe Isabel, we can talk a little bit about um, our initiative, Every Name Counts, which helps us uh, find more names within our, um, within our collection um, because maybe some names of the people who are joining us tonight will also be discovered via Every Name Counts. Do you want to go ahead? Just go ahead. I'm, I'm, <laughs> waiting, I'm sure. waiting for these messages. Um, so, um, I don't know if you have heard of our initiative, Every Name Counts. Um, it's an international initiative with which we are using a crowdsourcing um, tool to um, have as many names as possible indexed on our documents. So with every name counts, you can, um, I mean, if you, if you want to check it out, you can just go to our website and it will lead you to the crowdsourcing um, tool. And um, the crowdsourcing platform gives you um, pictures of documents from the URLs and archives 
and uh, we ask you to type in the information from different types of documents. And if three people have um, typed in the exact same information, they will be transferred to our database. Um, this is our quality safety management. Um, so we're using three sets of eyes to uh, make sure that all information are correct that we are transferring to our database. And then after a few months, so we're collecting all these data and then we um, upload them into our online archive. So that these names, sometimes names, for instance, um, of parents that are mentioned um, on Heftlings personal card and so on personal registration cards from various um, uh, concentration camps can be um, put into our database because these names sometimes have not been registered before. So this is a way to um, improve the searching uh, methods that we're using. Um, so this is a great way to um, be engaged in active memory culture and to, um, to improve uh, the research methods that we are using and that we are also giving to everyone because our online archive is free and everybody can, everyone can use it for their own research, um, no matter what, if they're relatives or if they're just interested in the topic and it's a way to keep the memory alive and to keep working on it. I think I would wait until seven o'clock, so three more minutes. I haven't heard anything yet, unfortunately, but I think we should also use the time to maybe talk about uh, your very personal project as well, a stolen memory, <laughs> if you like. <laughs> yes, because of course. Maybe some of you have heard of it before, but maybe also others not. So maybe, um, yeah, just. Sure. Um, yeah. Isabel has called it uh, my personal um, project. It's it's a project that I've joined about two years ago, and I'm now um, I'm the project manager now of this um, Arles and Archives project. It's called Stolen Memory, and it's about a very specific part of our collection, which isn't really part of our collection, to be quite honest, because um, we hold in our holdings the personal items of about two hundred uh, two thousand and five hundred. Uh, concentration camp inmates. These are personal items such as wedding rings, photographs, wallets, um, documents, um, things that these um, people wore on their body while being arrested by the, uh, by the Nazis. Um, and this collection derives from the Neuen Gamma concentration camp mostly. Some items are from Dachau. And um, together with volunteers from all over the world, we are looking for the families of these um, of these former inmates to return these very personal items to the families um, of the persecuted. So, um, in 2016, we started with this project, um, and since then, we found um, about 650 families all over the world. Um, and we're able to return these very personal items, often the mementos of people who weren't able to leave anything behind apart from these items, which are now coming back to the families more than 75 years after the war. So this is a very special project. Uh, we're doing various um, exhibitions on, on stolen memory in Germany. We're traveling with traveling <laughs> exhibitions throughout Germany. So if you're in Germany, check out the stolenmemory.org website. I will also post the link uh, in the chat. Um, if we're close to you, we're also traveling through Poland and um, Belgium and many more countries are to come because it's a, it's a very, um, it became a very popular project of the Arles and Archives and many towns want to show the exhibition. So this is um, great for us and we're, and especially great for the families of the victims because we're, finding more uh, families through the exhibitions. We are finding more volunteers to, um, to join the campaign and to um, look for families. Thank you. So, do you have a number of, a, of Avi to maybe call him? Unfortunately not. And um, I guess we have to find a second part or give you a second, another day to finish the story because I know that he told me that 
like he wanted to talk about his mother, his father, but of course, then about his own life and the ones of his uh, siblings and how they dealt with the experience of um, of their parents that survived the Holocaust. So unfortunately, we didn't hear that yet. And he also wanted to talk about people who um, were like pioneers to talk about what had happened and to to teach about it. So unfortunately, I think he is not coming back right now. I didn't get any message yet. I think his internet is just gone. So I'm very sorry. This has never happened before that we have to stop at this point. But as you have all registered, I have your email addresses. We will just send you um, another date and we will organize it pretty soon. So I hope that you will all come back and thank you very much for your messages. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I will also give them to Avi. So he will, um, I'm sure he will be back and he wants to carry on and tell the rest of the story. So hopefully um, see you very soon. And we are also saving all the questions. So we will come to them uh, the next time. Thank you very much and hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.